from a catastrophic failure at a Russian factory that sent molten metal flying in every direction, and a hot air balloon pilot who missed their landing in Rock County, Wisconsin, to a brave construction worker in Ecuador who risked it all to save a dog, and a Saudi Arabian truck driver who didn't know his bed was still up. Here are 10 moments you wouldn't believe if not filmed. Zubuo City is a prefecture-level metro in Shandong Province, China. About 3.1 million people live within the urban area, with another million in the outer city limits. They claim to be the birthplace of soccer, though many, many football fans, especially in the UK, feel differently. After seeing this video, they might be the birthplace of road rage. On December 3rd of 2022, a black SUV and a dump truck stopped ahead of a railroad crossing. The train was fast approaching, which made the entire internet question what happened next. Anybody who's paying attention can tell the train is coming. Then, the dump truck rolls forward and pushes the SUV onto the tracks. The rail worker has no idea what's going on. He lifts the arms to let them through, but they stop midway. Then, the truck driver backs up, taking the arm with him. Things get stranger when the people in the SUV get out of the car. Why not keep driving? You're literally about to get hit by a train. After a quick time lapse, the driver steps on the gas and misses the train by a few inches. The truck driver claims their brakes failed. The internet quickly accused him of foul play. After all, his brakes worked fine after he backed up. Looks a little bit more like attempted insurance fraud to us. Komsomolsk on Amur is a Russian city of about 238,000 people. It sits on the banks of the Amur River and acts as an industrial center for eastern Russia. But the more industry you have, the more vulnerable you are to industrial mistakes. On December 29th of 2013, workers at the local steel mill learned that lesson the hard way. While pouring molten metal, something went wrong with the machinery. Instead of pouring where it was supposed to, it spewed molten steel all over the factory floor. Imagine how hot that factory must be. Thanks to their safety training, none of the employees got hurt or burned during the accident. Though, we can't say what caused the machine to go full Terminator mode. It looks like the bucket is supposed to move along that path when it's empty. Somebody probably hit the wrong button. Steel melts between 2,500 and 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit, in case you were wondering how hot that molten metal is. Bushfires are no joke in Australia. Just ask the Dunmore Rural Fire Brigade based out of New South Wales. They're like the wildfires we see in California as the weather gets hot and the land gets dry. Australian bushfires are as dangerous and just as deadly. As a learning lesson, the fire brigade released shocking dash cam footage to show how quickly one of these bushfires can spread. The scene goes from a green rural road to a fiery nightmare in under three minutes. The date was January 4th of 2020. According to the brigade, they were tasked with protecting property ahead of a southerly wind that would spread the fire further. At the start of the video, things don't really seem that bad. Crews were standing around checking homes and waiting for supplies from other units. Notice how at this time, there doesn't appear to be any wind at all. Well, about a minute after that, the wind began to pick up and the scene took a dramatic turn. 
By now, most of the fire brigade was quickly leaving the scene and heading to safety, but one truck stayed back and captured the full intensity of the blaze. Winds picked up to roughly 62 miles per hour. Only two minutes after the video began, the scene looked like a hellscape. As the minutes passed, so did the fire, crossing the road and continuing on its path of destruction. Around the same time, those inside the truck activated the cab spray to protect themselves and their equipment from the blaze. This is basically a built-in safety measure that sprays water out in all directions surrounding the truck to stop it from catching on fire. A few minutes later, and the worst is behind them. Just as a reminder, this is what the road looked like less than 10 minutes prior. Thankfully, everyone got out in the nick of time. The video was released as a reminder of how quickly a fire can spread and how helpless you become in such a dangerous situation. In Pasaje Canton, Ecuador, a construction crew was working on an irrigation channel when a heartbreaking call came over the radio. A dog was stuck in the water, and the poor girl couldn't get out. One of the workers, a local man named Abel Murillo, had a bright idea to save the dog. He climbed into a backhoe bucket and had someone lower him into the water. He spotted the trapped dog and knew he had to time this rescue mission perfectly. Abel and the dog made it out of the bucket unharmed. After the rescue, the workers raised some money and took the dog to the vet. She was treated for inflammation and an infection, but fully recovered. According to the Daily Mail, the dog was walking through the channel when it opened. The rushing water swept her off her paws and carried her toward Abel and his bucket. He said the dog hung around the construction site for the next few days. Hikers from around the world flocked to Lake Waikere Moana in Te Urewera, New Zealand for a one-of-a-kind outdoor adventure. The lake features a 27-mile hiking trail that takes three to four days to walk. Thankfully, you can stay in reservable huts along the way. In October of 2015, a group of French hikers ventured into the Lake Waikere Moana Trail. They came across the Hopuruahine, a 213-foot suspension bridge built to hold 10 people. Since they were only a group of four, they shouldn't have had any trouble. The bridge had other ideas. Nous arrivons enfin au dernier pont, au dernier pont suspendu de notre Great Walk. Three of our hikers fell into the river while one held on to the bridge. Thankfully, everyone was okay, just a little wetter than they expected. According to Roland, the hiker who didn't fall, the team heard a cracking sound about halfway across the bridge. He grabbed onto the side and held it for dear life. When he turned to check on his friends, they were gone. Then he looked down and saw them treading water in the river. Officials blamed the collapse on a rare manufacturing defect with one of the cable links. There's a reason they say you're only as strong as your weakest link. We rely on trucks for everything. Look around you. Most of the objects in your home were probably on a semi at one point. 
But some trucks are too big for their own good. Things can get dangerous when the drivers aren't paying attention. Take this trucker in Saudi Arabia who forgot to put the bed down. Now, highway signs aren't the only things truckers like to hit. This bridge in Durham, North Carolina is notorious for frequent crashes. The Norfolk Southern Gregson Street overpass earned a local nickname over the years. They call it the Can Opener. You're about to find out why. The can opener has an 11-foot, 8-inch clearing. That was the standard height when they built it in the 1920s. In 1973, the standard increased to 14 feet to accommodate big trucks. Bridges constructed before that time did not have to be rebuilt. As you can imagine, truckers are used to driving under more modern bridges. Take these movers, for example. The can opener bridge claimed about one victim per month between 2008 and 2019. Then, in October of 2019, North Carolina raised the bridge 8 inches. However, the new 12-foot 4-inch clearing is still lower than we're used to. Jurgen Henn, who works nearby, mounted several cameras around the bridge to capture crashes. He runs a popular website called 11-foot-8, which documents every time a truck smashes into the bridge. Needless to say, there is a lot of content. Janesville is a small city in Rock County, Wisconsin. They're known as Wisconsin's Park Place, with 2,590 acres of park systems to play in. Yet, with all that open space, this hot air balloon pilot couldn't find a spot to land. A few friends were hanging by the tennis courts when they saw the hot air balloon trying to land. They thought it'd be cool to record. After all, it's not something you see every day. But what happened next was even crazier. They're gone. I missed it, so I have to go. Oh, they missed it. Idiot. Why did they fall in the middle of the street? Uh oh. Oh shit. Where are they going? Oh shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. Fuck. We just fuck. got this shit on camera. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> what the f These kids couldn't believe their eyes. Curiosity drew them closer to the accident, but it sounded like someone told them to stay back. According to the fire department, the owner was trying to land in Bond Park as he usually does. He misjudged the landing this time and tried to bring the balloon back up to avoid the power lines. That obviously didn't work, and the balloon popped when it hit the cables. Thankfully, everyone in the basket was okay and escaped without being electrocuted. The accident did knock out power in Janesville's west side, but it was restored shortly after removing the balloon. Lake Don Pedro is a small community in central California. To cool off, the locals like to splash around in, you guessed it, Don Pedro Lake. They have 160 miles of shoreline and 13,000 acres of water to enjoy. Most people spend their time boating or fishing, but in the summer of 2019, everyone was playing poker. This guy's houseboat must have had the lucky tables. This is Titanic, yo. Wait, 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 w
Look at him in the back. Um, no. um, where do you see him? Where is he? He's in the back. He's probably so on the It's going to be pontoon up here in a minute. He's crying. He is crying. Crying. Yeah, he's crying. He's crying. Pontoon up in a minute. What the shit? Look at the line. Him. Look at the line. He's getting tight over there on the far side. <gasps> so what's that mean? Oh, it's going to pop it. Pop it. Snap it? Hold the tree down. It's holding it. Is it's on a tree, no? Pontoons are going up in a minute. That one right here, right? The boogie or whatever? That rope. I'm going to cry. I need even my boat. Look at him. I think oh it's these ones over here in the pink and the salmon shirt. He's crying. Look at him. You see him? Oh, yeah. There they go. There they go. There they go. Oh, you have all of this on your phone. <laughs> this wasn't your average poker tournament. We can only describe it as a poker scavenger hunt. Players ventured around the lake, solving clues to find poker chips. When they found one, they returned to a check-in station to trade it for one card. Whoever had the best five-card hand won. One of those check-in stations was the houseboat in this clip. Apparently, too many players tried to cash their chips in at once. People on the top deck took a while to realize they were sinking. They scrambled to the shore when a few deck chairs began sliding and falling overboard. Thankfully, everyone made it off the boat in time. According to police, the owner was responsible for hiring someone to drag the boat out of the water. Hopefully, he had good houseboat insurance. Bears are probably the last thing on your mind if you live in New Jersey. But if you live in Jackson Township, you may have heard of the friendly neighborhood black bear who knows how to close doors. In November of 2021, Susan Kehoe, a local bear activist, opened her front door to find a massive black bear sitting on her porch. Instead of panicking, like the rest of us, she stayed calm and simply asked Mr. Bear to close her door. Oh, Mr. Bear? Will you be a good bear? Close the door for me, hon. Close the door. Close the door. Where's my good boy? Where's the good boy? Close the door. Oh, what a good boy. All the way. Still half open. Still half open. He's... Um. You doing? You're holding on to it now. Close it. You playing games with me? We can't stress enough how dangerous bears can be. If you open your door and see one, close it immediately. Don't ask the bear to close it for you, and don't let the bear inside your house. Susan is either crazy or the bona fide bear whisperer. After all, she's known for her interactions with local black bears. In 2010, she got a year's probation and a $1,250 fine for interfering with state biologists trying to tranquilize a bear and change its radio collar. Two years later, she almost got in trouble for intentionally feeding black bears, but was found not guilty. She's lucky, too. Feeding bears is very illegal in New Jersey and comes with a $1,000 fine. African safaris attract tourists from all over the world. It's your only chance to really see these animals in their natural habitat. However, that doesn't mean they appreciate humans poking around. Just ask this couple on safari in Kenya in 2018. Their tour boat passed by a family of three hippos chilling in a Kenyan lake. They all turned to face the family. Then, one decided to chase them away. I'm gonna turn around to face us too, keeping an eye. Yeah, I reckon. Oh, <laughs> that's a bit. <laughs> Where's coming for us? Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Look at him go! Fun fact, hippos can't actually swim. They're too heavy. 
Instead, they gallop across the bottom and jump up when they need to breathe. Thanks to their weight and bone density, these 10,000-pound animals can keep their feet on the ground instead of floating. Thankfully, our cameraman's tour boat was fast enough to outpace the hippo. Don't forget, they're still one of the deadliest animals on Earth. They claim about 500 lives each year, way more than the big cats that roam the African jungles. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, then click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.